All right. Well, thank you for coming back on our show. I've seen you all over TV. You are talking about your book, which is really a policy book on, on addiction and mental health. Obviously, they're treating it as a kind of a tell-all because you're a Kennedy. I mean, your father was Teddy Kennedy. Your, your uncle was President John F. Kennedy. Your cousin was John John Kennedy. But it's not really that, right? It's, you're really trying to change the policy in this country. Well, I had the honor of uh, serving in Congress and doing a lot with my late father to change policy in this space. Uh, you couldn't make it up, but my dad was the sponsor of the mental health bill in the Senate. I was the sponsor of the one in the House, and we actually had to negotiate with each other on what the final bill wow. would look like. And uh, what, what the narrative of the story is that my dad was old school, and frankly, his thinking is still very much alive today in terms of thinking of these things as, as character issues and not chemistry issues mm. or moral failings as opposed to medical issues. But he didn't want addiction and alcoholism to be covered in his bill because they made the political calculation that America wasn't ready for that and that what we really ought to cover is just the severe and persistent mental illness, which I agree with. But if we're going to cover the brain, let's cover the whole brain. That was our contention, Congressman Ramstead and myself. And at the end, he came around and said, you know, Patrick, we can pass your bill after all. And then he helped me pass it. And, uh, but what was amazing is that this was the guy that thought I was a loser because of my mental illness and addiction. Well, not, and, a, not a loser, right? But, but he could have been more understanding. Well, he said, I, he said a lot of things, like all I needed was a good swift well, kick he, in the ass, which he, in part he was right, but in part... Well, um, it's, it's a generational thing more than anything else. He's World War II generation, so were my parents. I get that. Yeah. They're very different. And, and one thing I really learned from this book is that the, the, the Kennedys, I think when America thinks of the Kennedys, they think of two things, liberalism and tragedy. And the way the Kennedys dealt with tragedy is the way a lot of people in that generation That's dealt right. with tragedy. You medicate with booze. That's right. You deny. That's right. Stoicism, secrecy. And My that's dad a lot of people, what whether he was about. drinking or not. And so that was the great thing about him. And you think he could have been president if he had found a way to... Well, think about the fact he was the greatest senator in the history of the country, or arguably one of the top five in the whole history of our country. You're a little prejudiced, but okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but he managed to do that, you know, with a couple of hands tied behind his back in terms of his full potential. And I just think, you know, clearly he could have been president, in my view, if he hadn't had those struggles. The remarkable thing is that... Well, he, the, the, the car thing didn't help. And that was a result, frankly, of the fact that sure. he'd seen his, he was both of his brothers murdered. They, everybody else says they were assassinated, but what they really were were murdered violently. And then nobody bothered to well, say that, um, you know... You can't blame Chappaquiddick on the brothers being murdered. He, you we could, could say you he could, was sad because of that. No, you could not... say that when both of your siblings are violently murdered and everyone knows you're drinking yourself into the ground because of it, that someone would step in because these are real illnesses today. If you had well, experienced that kind of post-traumatic stress and said, you need help. Instead, they said, keep going, keep going. And that's how tragedies take place. Okay. We'll agree to disagree on that one.